So far in your toolbox you have three methods now for solving quadratic equations. First method, factor. If it's easy to factor. Second method was completing the square. And the third method was quadratic formula. Okay, so this section they've asked you to use the method which seems easiest to you. Well, this, when I look at this, I immediately see 5 times 1 is 6, so the first thing I think of is factoring, which particularly for me, this particular problem just looks really easy to factor because I have x, x, 5 times 1 is 5, gives me negative 6 if I put both negative signs and I just get x is equal to 1 or x is equal to 5. So it was a very simple factoring problem. You might not like to factor something like this with a leading coefficient. This one does factor quite easily though because you have to recognize that if I had 3 times 3 is 9, well, and this would be 2y times 2y, so 2 times 3 gives me 6, and when I do that twice I get 12. So it does factor very easily, and I can show you that. If you factored this, you'd put a 2y here and a 2y here and a 3 and a 3, and because everything's positive, it's just 2y plus 3 quantity squared, if you'd recognize that. Um, but it's a little more difficult to recognize them when you have that leading coefficient. Now, if I were going to use the quadratic formula on that, okay, so, sorry, our answer up here, now you have to set each one of these equal to zero. Forget about that. So, this is a double root, obviously, because they're equal, so 2y equals 3, y equals, or I'm sorry, 2y equals negative 3, y is equal to minus 3 halves. Again, for this quadratic, get it in standard form, y squared minus, whoops, minus 2y minus 99 equals 0. Now, you might not know all your factors in 99, but really 11 times 9 works here. So actually, believe it or not, this one factors very easily. y and y and 11 and 9, and I want the negative on the 11 and the positive on the 9, so y is equal to negative 9 or 11. On this quadratic, I would choose completing the square because let's say I don't recognize any factors of 396 that are going to give me that 4 middle term. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do completing the square and I'm going to get rid of my constant term. My coefficient of x squared is 1, which is exactly what I want. So if I put the 396 on the right side and I leave that space, I can take half of the 4, and that's 2, square it, and I get 4, and add 4. Well, now this is a perfect square. It's x plus 2, quantity squared, is equal to, I forgot to add the 4 over here, didn't I? Okay, and now I get 400. Well, this is nice because taking the square root of both sides, x plus 2 is equal to the square root of 400, which I happen to know is tw uh, 20. So I have subtract 2 from both sides, so I get plus or minus 20 minus 2. And so now I have positive 20 minus 2, which gives me 18, and negative 20 minus 2 gives me minus 22. Okay, you want to get this one in standard form. The easiest way to do that is to go ahead and square that binomial, then distribute the 2, and then combine all your like terms. So by squaring the binomial first, I'm just going to do it this way. y squared minus 2y plus 1 equals y squared. Now I have to distribute the 2, and I get 2y squared. I'm going to bring this y squared minus y squared over minus 4y plus 2 equals 0. So I end up with y square, 2y square minus 1y square, it's just 1y squared, minus 4y plus 2 equals 0. 
so I guess what I would like to do with this is I could either um, complete the square or what I could do is I could just do this with a quadratic formula. Does it factor? Not really. 2 and 1 are my only factors and I, with 1 and 2 and a leading coefficient of 1 I'm never going to get a 4 in there. So I guess let's try the quadratic formula on this. So minus b, which is b is already negative 4, so the opposite of b is 4, plus or minus the square root of 16 minus 4 times 1 is 4, times 2 is 8, all over 2 times 1, which is just 2. Okay, so this is... 16 minus 8 is root 8, so I have 4 plus or minus 2 root 2 over 2. And now I can cancel out the 2, and I end up with 2 plus or minus root 2. So now on this one, however you choose to get a common denominator to combine those fractions is up to you. What I would do is I would use this and I would multiply this one times this one, which is this one squared, which I know what that is, x squared plus 2x plus 1, minus x squared, this product, all over x times x plus 1 is equal to 2. Now all I have to do, if I have 2 over 1 here, is cross multiply, because I really have a proportion, so I have x squared plus 2x, oops, let's combine like terms while we're at it, sorry, x squared, x squared minus x squared cancels out, so I just get 2x plus 1 is equal to 2 times this is 2x times x plus 1, which 2x squared plus 2x. Now, get everything on the left or the right, whichever way you want to do it. Subtract 2x from both sides, and it's gone. Subtract 1, and I'm left with 2x squared minus 1 equals 0. Okay, now, how do you want to do this one? You can look at, can I factor it? Well, no, because I have this leading coefficient of 2, and I can't get rid of it. Um, and it's not a perfect square. It looks like the difference of two perfect squares, but it'd be nice if that were a perfect square too, but it's not. So I can't factor it. Let's use the quadratic formula. I could complete. I can't complete the square here because I have zero as my b term. So quadratic formula is the way to go with this one. So b here is equal to zero, remember, because there is no middle term. So b squared is just zero. So x equals plus or minus the square root of 0, b squared, I'm going to put it in here, minus 4 times a, which is 2, that's 8, times negative 1. So it's minus 8, all over 2 times a, which is 2, it's 2 times 2. Okay, That gives me a 4 down here. So, my answer is x is plus or minus, now the square root, this minus a negative becomes a positive 8, and you know that that is 2 root 2, and this is all over 4, and my 2 cancels out into my 4 twice, and I get plus or minus root 2 over 2.